Welcome to the fourth episode of the second series of the Women in CX podcast, a series dedicated to real talk conversations between women in customer experience. Listen in as we share our career stories, we live the moments that shaped us and voice our opinions as loudly as we like about all manner of CX subjects. I'll be your host, Claire Muscat, and in today's episode, we'll be hearing one woman's story about the struggles of growing up in a war-torn country, the growth of CX in the GCC, and her views on empowering women by challenging gender stereotypes in the Middle East. Let me introduce you to today's inspiring guest. She began her career in sales before moving into marketing, and later bringing customer experience to the international industrial manufacturing industry. She holds an MBA, recently won Customer Experience Professional of the Year, and is presently shortlisted for My Customer CX Leader of the Year. Please welcome to the show, CX sister, Maya Khalifa. Hi, Maya. Hi, Claire. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you? (laughs) I'm doing great. I'm so happy we got the chance finally to have this interview (laughs) yeah I know third time lucky right after all the technical hitches (laughs) there's the wonders of uh, having to communicate through zoom these days so just before we start I just should ask with you being from Lebanon how are things going in Beirut well uh, I can honestly say it was hard time recently Uh, we had the Beirut blast Mm. uh, two months ago and it was really hard. It's now uh, a fight uh, against uh, against the people who are stealing the money from Lebanon. Wow. So against our government, against the corruption. So we hope to win the fight because it's really sad to see a country with all the potential that its people have and just having a government that is corrupt. So mm-hmm. now we, we are fighting with the Western countries uh, against uh, the corruption yeah. we hope to win <laughs> yeah I hope you win too <laughs> um, so basically the theme of our conversation today is going to be around changing the perception of gender stereotypes in the Middle East so I guess my first yes. question just as a woman who grew up in a, in a very different place to you um, I know that Lebanon had a history of real civil unrest you know right up to today as you just described where the government corruption has been problematic for the people what was it like growing yes. up as a woman in Lebanon? Uh, well, growing up in Lebanon was a little bit hard because, uh, you know, we had 30 years of war in Lebanon and uh, the 30 years of war need so much time to revitalize the economy, the stability, the security. So it was definitely hard. However, uh, the Lebanese people, and if you get to meet Lebanese people in Europe, in the US, anywhere in the world, you'll notice something about them. They are resilient, mm. okay? That's why they say we are, uh, we are like the phoenix bird. Mm. Uh, we get through problems, but we are resilient. We try to pass them. We try to pass the problems instead of just living in it and dying in the problem that we are through. So it was definitely hard, not just as... Uh, a woman. It was hard as a human being Mm -hmm. living in Lebanon. Uh, And it is hard uh, now. Uh, So uh, we we learned the resilience due to such a history in Lebanon. History of struggle, but you're turning that around into a positive in being able to survive and thrive in what is unequivocally a difficult time. And Yes. I I was thinking about like the impression that perhaps Western women have of the Middle East and women from the Middle East being quite oppressed by things like Sharia law. And um, if I question my own judgment, um, ha- having spoken to you, I know that it's, it's not the reality. But could you tell me more yes. about um, the concept and, and the constructs of male guardianship and what's being done to reform this in the Middle East? Well, uh, definitely there is a lot being done right now in the Middle East to reverse uh, this view of women in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And I am personally on a mission to say that women are 
empowered women are independent on their own they don't need the man mm -hmm. uh, to uh, be, to thrive and succeed in life mm -hmm. okay and uh, we uh, if i want to compare i'm really uh, as a middle eastern woman i'm really proud to see what saudi arabia under the patronage of mohammed bin salman are preparing for under vision 2030 mm -hmm. where a lot of uh, women empowerment is done in a country that is really safe and secure. I travel all the time to Saudi Arabia, so uh, I live that uh, area of security and stability. Mm. So there's a lot being done in a short period of time, like the women were not allowed to drive before, and now you see women driving around in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so the Middle East, which contains different countries, Arab countries, like Bahrain, Egypt, Iraq, uh, Lebanon uh, in parallel uh, is one, uh, one of the regions in the world where it has the lowest participation of the women in the uh, workforce. Right. We have uh, not just the right but the duty to fight for that. We, have, we need to be asking for safe public transportation like we see in the UK. Okay, mm -hmm. We need to be asking for women equality in the workforce okay? so that the women can participate more in this region of the world. Mm. <laughs> so um so so you just mentioned their safe transport what's unsafe about it at the moment for women well uh you don't have uh, trans public transportation right. uh, for women you have many barriers that we need to uh, pass you don't have public transportation you still have the man who thinks that he is allowed to ask his wife not to work. And uh, the wife will accept uh, that because her husband is asking for this. We have to change the mindset, oh, yeah. okay? Yeah, that the woman, we have really, really in the region, the women are ambitious, they are educated, they mm -hmm. want to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to change this and empower the woman. Look at the woman in the Arab countries at tell them you can do, you can perform, you can succeed on your own. You don't need the man, mm. uh, the male guardianship with you. Yeah. So what, what's going to change that? So you mentioned the Sheikh is reforming some laws. Yes. So uh, you have leading countries in the GCC uh, who are leading these uh, laws and uh, and changing the way the woman is viewed. In Lebanon, where I belong, uh, the woman is empowered. Okay, let's say, uh, the, the, plus we have a very good education system that was not affected by the war that ravaged our country. Mm. Okay, uh, however, in other countries like in UAE, uh, like in Saudi Arabia, the women are taking from the government official initiatives, and this is so happy news, mm. to help them to become empowered on their own, to help them to uh, pass uh, through work and life changes without feeling insecure and the need for the man. Mm. Okay, uh, We are not here to compete with the man. We complement each other. Mm. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, and you want to be viewed as such mm -hmm. so is it is it helping men to change their perception of women as well as helping women to change the perception of themselves yes yes exactly we need to we need to look in the woman and tell them mm -hmm. you deserve you deserve you uh, you don't just uh, this is your right as a human being. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what's beautiful is that you have leaders like Mohammed bin Salman uh, pushing for this. So you'll uh, see the whole country moving towards that uh, direction. And we hope that Saudi Arabia teaches the other surrounding countries yes. what they are doing so yes. that the other countries do this as well. Is there quite a conflict with religious belief and female empowerment then? Uh, I don't want uh, to interfere with the religious uh, beliefs. I, 
for me, the human being is a human being disregarding what religion he right. belongs to. He should be treat others uh, nicely and kindly mm -hmm. uh, and equally. Uh, so uh, I am sure that all religions will want the woman to shine in life. Yeah, no, you and you want this for the generations to come. Uh, I would be really uh, disappointed to know that my daughter will grow up in an uh, environment, in an environment that does not believe in woman empowerment. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I do everything I do so that my kids look up and say, we can achieve, we can become whatever we want to become, disregarding if it's a boy or a girl. Mm, mm, mm. and you were definitely a very incredibly strong role model <laughs> um, so thank you I saw your article challenging the stereotypes and sharing your perspective on women yes. in the GCC um, being just yes. as ambitious as women in the west um, I just wanted to ask you what frustrates you about the stereotype and what needs to change I guess on the western side to ensure that women are seen for their strength as opposed to their struggle so uh, we want to know, uh, we want to teach the Western that the women in the Middle East, they are ambitious. They want to achieve, uh, uh, to achieve corporate positions, okay? Uh, I want to make it clear that it's not our fight in the Middle East alone. 15% of sea level positions worldwide are held only by women, only 15%. This is not our fight alone. This is the fight of all women in the world. This is our right, okay? Uh, so uh, this is our, the woman herself, the Arab woman herself and the Western woman has to believe in herself. Do you know that the woman will only apply for a job if she feels she fits 100% of the job offer. Mm -hmm. Whereas the man will apply if he feels he fits 60% of the job offer. We need to believe in ourselves more. We mm -hmm. need to teach our friends, uh, the women, we need to teach our kids, we need to teach our environment that they need to believe in themselves before teaching the men and our counterpart about it. We need to believe in it ourselves. The second uh, the second thing is that us, the women, we see ourselves at equal distance from the men in the region here. That's why you will see uh, women asking for divorce. It's not like people think in the Western, mm -hmm. uh, Western world. You'll see women uh, being uh, on their own, asking for divorce, asking for uh, custody of their uh, children. Uh, so... On the other uh, hand, on the other hand, we have a lot of work that we need to do ourselves. Okay, Be being the country, the region, Middle East, as uh, the region that has the least uh, women in the workforce worldwide. Mm -hmm. So uh, there should be reforms on a country level, uh, by country by country, to fix this uh, matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so uh, so that is a long road and it needs resilience, it needs strength uh, to reach the ultimate goals that you would like to achieve. And it's not our war alone. You hear with the corona how many women in the Western world were hit by men mm -hmm. due, during this lockdown. So this is a global uh, initiative that should be led for women empowerment. Women should not accept to be hit by men, not even once. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you hear when I watch CNN, when I watch the Western news, and I am totally sad to hear that even in the Western world, we see all the time, maybe more than in our region uh, here, we see all the time uh, this going on. Yeah, violence against women it definitely is a global yes. problem. So how do you think women in the West and in the Middle East can work? Oh, sorry, something just came through my door. I was going to ask that question again. No problem. So how do you think women from the West and the Middle East can work together better to change stereotypes and change culture and change um, female empowerment? Yes. How, how do you think we best yes. do that? Yeah. 
Yeah, there should be initiatives uh, to join forces, okay, all together uh, at a global level between the West and our region. Uh, and like uh, we can have summits in Dubai, for instance, mm -hmm. women's summits in Dubai, where we're gathering from the West and from our region, uh, or in Saudi Arabia, where these two countries are really in a beautiful way leading change and women empowerment. Uh, so uh, we have to acknowledge uh, the problem is not in the Middle East. The problem is everywhere in the world. Yes. This 15% this 15% in the leadership positions is everywhere. It's not in the Middle East alone. Mm -hmm. If I go to Europe, it's 15% of women only in the leadership board. And that's so uh, upsetting uh, to see. So there should be a global movement for women to ask for their right and acknowledge this is not what we want and we have to change it. Brilliant. And um, I think having conversations like these for me personally is one of the best ways to um, understand the similarities and differences between women from different backgrounds or culture. And I've had my eyes opened so much by interacting with women I perhaps would not have met had we not had coronavirus and the ability to reach yes. out, connect and, and get on Zoom. So I'd encourage anybody, any women in CX to uh, reach out and connect with people like Maya and get to know um, the similarities and the differences and you know share that vision of working together it's also made me think when we eventually have um, women in CX community events we'll definitely have to put one on yes. by uh, when we're allowed to meet together <laughs> and physically bring oh my them god together. even in Saudi Arabia <laughs> Saudi Arabia is a beautiful country yeah. so they have the Red Sea beach <laughs> <laughs> we'll, go we'll go to the beach <laughs> that sounds amazing so, so my last question um, just around kind of your background and stuff is around um, I saw that you recently won the professional of the year award um, yes. so that's something that I won in 2011 in the UK so I know it's an wow. amazing platform to you know kind of cast your career off from in CX but how is CX evolving in the GCC and what was the experience like of winning that award for you so it was really amazing to win it. And it's a journey, as you know, it's not just winning the day of the winning, it's the whole application process and being part of the finals and getting in front of the jury and getting to look at people and them telling you, you are doing a wonderful job that is world-class. You are a role model for the society. As a woman, this is the message that I want beyond anything and when I won the award I said I'm offering this award to the Arab women who work and uh, thrive in the society and in such a tough environment they are really challenging the stereotype and fighting uh, which is double as hard as in the West and such a thing so winning it was really wonderful so in parallel, CX is a major uh, area to focus on in the GCC. Like you'll see CX at the level of the government, like initiatives on in terms of citizen experience. Oh. Uh, it's really amazing how it's being worked on the level of the government and on the level of companies. Uh, and before the corona, we did not have it as much as now. It is like everybody is talking in the GCC now about customer experience and digital transformation that are going hand in hand as part of the business transformation of companies. Mm. Mm, that's fascinating. And I just have to pick up on um, what you said there. So you, it was in your acceptance speech, you dedicated your award to all the women in the GCC who were working in CX. Yeah. I love that. Oh. Yes. <laughs> you are one inspiring because, woman. <laughs> oh my God, because this is what this is the message that we want to send. We want to send as women, you are independent. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve, no matter what. You work hard, you achieve it, you are on your own, you should be resilient. These are key messages that we have uh, a role in transmitting to the society. Yes. We don't want the woman to be looked at. Uh, not just in the Middle East, 
everywhere okay. in the world they look at the woman as as uh, a fragile entity no we're not fragile we are as strong as uh, the male counterpart okay sometimes uh, stronger. you don't want to yeah <laughs> we, we can of have course. babies <laughs> of course um, oh that's amazing um so what would your advice be for women in customer experience okay so i have three top messages that I wanted to say today uh, through this uh, podcast. First of all, sit at the table, okay? Uh, even if you're not invited, bring your chair and sit, okay? Uh, the second message that I want to uh, say is communicate what you want. We expect that people would know what you want. People don't know. People will not fight for you. Communicate what you want and continuously iterate, okay? Okay, if this doesn't work, let's try something else, let's try. And this is the power of design thinking itself uh, where you know what you want, you communicate it clearly, the other person refuses your message, you try another way, but you keep on communicating. And the third and last, don't leave before you leave. So really the woman uh, worldwide, okay? <laughs> because I see it a problem everywhere. They say, okay, at the age of 40, I want to have my kids and I want to have these goals. And they start to shape their life from, I don't know which age around that concept, mm. okay? And they refuse opportunities in life. Mm. Uh, bec because they are surrounding themselves around that concept. So don't leave before you leave. Keep on fighting. Keep on sitting on the table. Keep on communicating what you want and be resilient because life is hard, but it's beautiful. Oh, that's so inspiring. Honestly, like I feel like I could just take on the world having spoken to you, Maya. <laughs> So yeah, just to summarize, um, thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing your insights. And um, for a lot of the women from the West who have listened to this today, I'm sure we've learned a lot. And for the women that are from the Middle East, they're probably standing right behind you now saying what a wonderful, inspiring role model you are. Um, not only to your thank children, you. your daughters, which I know is so important that you want them to grow up feeling that they've got the power, but um, also your fellow females yes. in your region and actually women like me from all around the world. So I'd just like to say you are one inspiring woman in CX. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and let's look forward to Women in CX conference uh, in the UAE or yes. uh, Saudi Arabia soon. <laughs> you yeah. take care. Yes, would love to. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Women in CX podcast with me, Claire Muscat. If you enjoyed the show, please drop us a like, subscribe or leave a review on whichever platform you're listening or watching on. And if you want to know more, please join us at womenincx.community and follow the Women in CX page on LinkedIn. Join us again next week where I'll be talking to another inspiring woman in CX about the lessons we learn from our mothers, her meteoric rise to CX fame, her views on customer experience and her best advice on female leadership. See you all next week.